the Apollo missions. This is not a mock-up. These are the very consoles we sat at when men first took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap. And we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown before. It was a few days before Christmas, 1968, when Apollo 8 sat on the pad. She was the first of a new kind, a moon rocket. This was the Phoenix, risen from the ashes of Apollo 1. The first Apollo crew did not die in vain. This was to be their testament. Thirty-six stories high, she had been fully fueled throughout the night. The liquid oxygen in her tanks caused ice to form on the outside of the craft. The extreme temperature difference between the air and the sub-zero fuel caused the metal skin of the rocket to expand and contract. Everyone was on the pad agreed. It was as though the rocket was alive, breathing, straining at the leash. Earlier in the morning, astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders had made their final preparations before taking that long ride out to the waiting spacecraft. The minimum safe distance from a Saturn V at liftoff was three miles. The reason was simple. When fully fueled, the rocket contained the explosive power of an atomic bomb. As the clock counted down, the astronauts and all of us in launch control went through the pre-flight checks, our hands on the controls of the most powerful, most complex machine ever built. It had over two million separate systems, and to bring these men back alive, everything had to work perfectly. Each individual system had been tested but what we didn't know was how they would perform when all two million began to work together. That moment would come when the countdown clock reached zero. If a maneuvering thruster failed, if communications broke down, if navigation was off by one degree, if any piece of the miles of wiring, circuits, relays, or valves was defective, Frank Borman, Jim Lowell, and Bill Anders would pay with their lives. As they sat waiting for launch on that chill December morning, these three astronauts were back to what they had always been, test pilots. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8, right here where it actually happened. Instrument 
is ready, spacecraft ready, final check of the emergency detection system, that ready light also. First stage preparations are completed. All systems are ready, okay. Okay, keep going. 60 seconds and counting, the vehicle now is completely pressurized. We have the power transfer, we're now on the flight batteries within the launch vehicle. Final reports are coming from Frank Borland at this time. Final look at the switches aboard the spacecraft. 20 seconds on the specs, we are still lower at this time. successfully orbited the moon, and the astronauts returned safely to the Earth. I know. I'm Jim Lovell, and I was one of the crew of this spacecraft, Apollo 8. We were the first men to see the surface of the moon from just a few miles away. But it was the hundreds of thousands of men and women who worked in that team, and the millions of people who supported the mission that really made it possible. That way, I guess, we all went to the moon. Now approaching uh, lunar sunrise, and uh, for all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the Earth, and the Earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. <laughs> God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land Earth, and the gathering together of the waters called the seas. God saw that it was good. And 
from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth.